Hello everyone, welcome to Act the Book. I'm Bakir and in this channel I share videos about important lessons that I learned from amazing self-improvement books and bring them to you every week to make your life better. From the beginning until the end of this video, I'm going to share with you about the science of the habit. How does the habit work in our brain? And then we are going to talk about how we can get rid of the bad habits that we are having. And then we will move on how we can incorporate or add new habits in our daily lifestyle. But if you stick with me until the end of the video, I'm going to share with you two key elements with the help of which you can add any new habit easily in your lifestyle and you can keep it consistent for the rest of your life. So, the first and the most important, how does the habit work in our brain? How, how we behave or how we behave certain actions? And the answer to that question, according to the book called uh, Atomic Habits, written by James Clear, which is an amazing book and I highly recommend it to you and to anyone else who is interested in learning new habits. And according to that book, um, our brain process any habit or any action in four different phases. These phases are called cue, trigger, response and reward. Let's learn each phase separately and, and know how we perform any action. So the first thing, cue. Cue is any data that your brain receives through your senses. For example, your eyes, your nose, um, your ears, and, and these cue kind of like sends a message to your brain to tell it that it is the time to perform or to initiate an action. For example, I'm a smoker. I am standing in an environment or in a surrounding where a person takes out a cigarette out of the pocket and then he starts smoking. When I look at that person, my eyes send a message or that initiates cue to send a message to my mind to tell that it is the time for you to smoke as well. So basically, Q is kind of like a reminder for us. For example, if, I, if I'm a heavy social media user, um, if, if I'm, staying, if I'm stay, staying without any activity, and if I see a social media or Instagram icon or, or an application on my home screen, that sends a message or that reminds my brain to, to go and use this application. So basically, Q is any, any information or any data that goes to your mind uh, through your senses and that reminds your brain to perform any action. And the second phase is trigger. When the cue is received in your mind, it initiates a trigger. It, it initiates a kind of like a trigger. It, it triggers craving. And that craving is a feeling of performing an action. For example, going back to the example of, of smoking, if I as a smoker receive that uh, cue in my brain, then that cue initiates or triggers craving in my whole body, which means that until I don't smoke, there is a feeling of uncomfortableness. There is a feeling of, of, of I'm missing something in my life. And that once that trigger is initiated, then the brain goes to the third phase, which is the time for responding to that craving. Again, in the same example of uh, smoking, once I receive the cue in my brain, and then my brain sends a signal in my whole body and that signal initiates craving. And if I don't smoke, that craving keeps, keeps moving in my brain and my body. And then until I, I, take, a, I take a cigarette and then start smoking uh, just like the, the other person. So, that, so in, in the phase of response, we perform that specific action or we perform that specific habit. And then on the last phase, which is reward, it is very important. Every work that we do, we get some sort of reward, either tangible or intangible. Um, and in the same case of smoking, for example, if the person if the person smokes or performs the, performs the action or responds to, to, to the craving, then that per, that person gets a reward of feeling of satisfaction, feeling of calmness, feeling of of uh, of relaxation so that feeling which is untangible reward for that person or for the his for his brain and similarly any habit or any behavior that we perform in our daily life it goes through these four phases first 
Our brain receives any message as a reminder, as a cue, and then that cue triggers craving, which, which, which forces your body and your mind to perform that action. And then once, once that craving starts, then we move to response. We respond and we perform that action to end that craving. And then we move to, uh, to reward. And once we get the reward, that habit or that, that uh, behavior ends for that time period. Now that we know that how, how habit signs work in our brain, let's move on how we can get rid of bad habits. Bad, I mean, everyone has bad habit. Everyone, and, and, and it, it's a, it's, I'm, I believe that everyone tries to, to remove that bad habit and to be a better person, to be a better version of himself or herself every single day. And, and through the lifetime that we, we grow, uh, we pick different habits and, and some of the habits are good, some of the habits are bad. And now with this technique we can, we can learn how to get rid of those bad habits. So in order to get rid of those habits, there are four techniques that we have to do. The first um, technique is to make cue invisible. For example, in the same example of smoking, if I am a smoker, um, if I don't see the other person smoking, which means that I don't get a cue or I don't give cue to my brain, then my brain does not get reman reminder of smoking. So the first and most important thing for any bad habit to get to stop is to, to for us to try remove all the, the cues in our surrounding. For example, if I if I'm a heavy social media user, if I spend a lot a lot of time on on, on Instagram, Facebook. Snapchat uh, or any other social media, I have to I have to remove those applications from from my eyesight. So whenever, for example, whenever I go to to home screen of my mobile phone, I don't see those those applications, which means that I don't give cue to my brand. And once we and and also the, the second technique is to make it um, unattractive and. But unattractive, I mean, or or James Clear means um, that uh, if every time that you perform an action, try to highlight the benefits of avoiding that habit. For example, um, if I if I'm a smoker, I would be thinking, okay, okay, um, what am I getting through this smoking? I don't get any sort of health benefits. I'm also harming the people in my surrounding, and uh, it it also ruins my breath. Um, so so these sort of these sort of disadvantages or, or or side effects. If I keep emphasizing on those, then I I start feeling or, or I start kind of like understanding uh, about about the about the essence of avoiding this habit. And the third technique that James Clear uh, shares in his in his book Atomic Habit is. Um, to, to make any habit difficult, to, to create resistance between you and your habit. For example, in the, uh, in the example of smoking, you, what you can do is you can take cigarette and store it somewhere that is, that is difficult for you or, in, or involves different steps and stages for you to get that cigarette. For example, you can give it to your friend. Uh, or you can give it to your partner, you, you can give it to your, any fa family members that you live with them. And then you ask them, whenever I ask you a cigarette, uh, for, whenever I want to smoke a cigarette, I have to go through all these stages and to get a cigarette from that person. The more resistance we have between, between us and, and that, and that um, action or that habit, the difficult it gets. And the difficult it gets, um, the, the, we decrease the chances of performing that habit. Now that we have already avoided or met all the cues invisible in our in our surrounding, and also we have uh, we have met the the habit or the the behavior unattractive through emphasizing or highlighting the benefits of avoiding that habit, and also um, brought some challenges or, or difficulties or or uh, resistance between us and the habit. Let's move to the, to the, to the final uh, stage or the technique of this uh, avoiding bad habit, which is 
make the habit unsatisfactory. For example, um, what what James Clear mean with with this uh, with this technique is try to make yourself accountable. Um, for if if you are living with 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 your family members or with your partner, try to ask that person to keep you accountable for your behavior. Or another idea could be you can announce it on your social media that I am going to quit smoking and that announcement itself kind of pulls you back from performing that action and it keeps you accountable and um, you can also you can also kind of like you can also write any agreement letter if with with your partner with your family member or with your friend if I smoke I'm going to pay you this amount of money or if I smoke I'm going to do this as a consequence of that action so the more and and the, the more we lose the more unsatisfactory that habit gets for us and that is the whole idea behind how you can get rid of a bad habit all right now that we know that how we can get rid of all the bad habits it's the time for us to move on how we can create good habits and similarly for all the techniques that we use to create good habits is exactly the opposite of the, the, the techniques that we use how to get rid of the bad habits which means the first thing is to make a habit obvious and uh, James Clear says the uh, the more the more the cues are obvious for a habit or for a behavior the more likely it gets to, to perform which means that the more the more the brand gets reminder to perform that action and in order for us to give more reminder to our brain we have to use uh, we have to design our environment and to give to give our brain continuous reminders and one of the things that that uh, that we can do is use post-it notes. For example, we can you can post, you can you can write on post-it notes to set to give you reminder and display those post-it notes in in your in your bedroom, in your uh, in your office, or anywhere that you that you are likely to to spend more time and to, you, that you are likely to to do the action immediately. And um, the, the other thing is the other thing that that James Clear mentioned is is habit stacking. Um, and for for habit stacking is to, to combine two different habits uh, together and it will motivate you to perform that new habit easier for example I want to read a book and I'm already and drinking drinking coffee early in the morning is already a habit that I have been practicing for a very long time and um, and if I want to use this method this habit stacking method what I would do is I would uh, I would make it as a rule for me that after I drink coffee early in the morning, I would be reading book for let's say two minutes or five minutes. And if I connect these two habits together, then the the habit of drinking coffee would be a reminder for me, or it can work as a cue for me to move on to my new habit, which is reading a book. The other one is attractive. Uh, how we can how we can make a habit attractive. And um, James Clear says for us to make a habit more attractive, we can use a method called temptation bundling. What it basically means is uh, we we are always tempted to do things that we enjoy more. Uh, and uh, for example, we are more tempted to to watch Netflix. We are more tempted to spend more time on on uh, on uh, social media. We are more tempted to watch a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, so. James Clear says uh, we can make our habits more attractive or new habits more attractive by by bundling new habit with with something that we we, we enjoy to do and he has a formula of a behavior you want to do combine it with a behavior you need to do for example in the case or an example of reading a book or ma making a habit of reading it, it, I, I can say that I can bundle two different habits together for example um, watching Netflix plus watching Netflix would be something that I want to do and reading a book is, it would be something that I need to do so I would I could I would combine this together and I would say um, every time that I watch Netflix uh, I have to uh, read a book uh, before watching Netflix and um, and another way for us to to 
to make our um, new habit attractive is by joining in social groups or by joining groups of people where our new habit is is normal behavior for those people and uh, for example in my case if I want to making making if, if I want to make reading a book as a new habit I could join groups uh, book reader groups on, on Facebook I could join a groups of friends um, outside my outside my normal or, or, or usual friends who read more often who talk about different books and if I if I join those people it would be more attractive for me and it would, I would be more motivated to perform that action and um, the third the third technique is to make it easy and as, as we mentioned in the um, in, in in the techniques of getting rid of the bad habit you have to create more resistance uh, in order for you to to get to to create distance between you and your habit or to, to get rid of that habit and similarly in, in order to make a new habit easier for you to perform it is must for us to reduce the re resistance as much as possible the more we reduce the, the resistance the more likely the habit uh, it gets to perform and a method that James Clear mentions in his book Atomic Habits is um, two minute rule so James Clear says that any new habit that we want we want to create we have to reduce or, or downscale it to the extent of only two minutes any habit that can be performed to, in two minutes it will be easier for us to perform it it will be easier for us to motivate ourselves to get and start that habit and um, he, he also mentions about decisive moment uh, that it, for us to, to make any habit easier we have to master decisive moment decisive moment is is that small and short interval of time where our brain take a decision to perform uh, to perform any 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 action for example if I want to um, if I want to watch Netflix and uh, the, at the same time I could also use that time to read a book or, uh, or to do something else then I have two different options. My brain will be deciding to take to, to choose which option and more than offer. And if we don't know about decisive moment, uh, our brain tend to, to choose something that we enjoy the most. For example, in this case, my brain could choose watching Netflix. And um, but if, if I know and the decisive moment, and if I if I master the decisive moment, then I can I can uh, use that as, as an, in my advantage to take decision of going and reading the book. However, we, we might not end up enjoying that. But if we take the decision, if we take, uh, if if we uh, instead of holding laptop on our in our hands, and we just hold the book, that second can change the next few minutes, and that that can that can force us and motivate us to keep reading for the next couple of minutes so in that way we can um, we can make it more actionable uh, and we can it would be easier for us to perform our our new habit and the fourth technique is to make your new habit as satisfact as, as satisfactory as possible and for that there are um, there are there are two different there are two different methods and one of the method that uh, James Clear mentions in his book is reward immediate reward not only reward but immediate reward reward he says that whatever or any action that uh, that is rewarded immediately it tends to repeat and any action that is rewarded that is punished immediately it tends to be avoided or stopped so it is that's a human nature and the, the thing that we uh, if, if we give reward or immediate reward for our actions for our habits then we tend to perform it more often we tend to repeat it for the next time for example if if i want to uh, create reading as a new habit for me um, i could reward myself okay if i watch or if i read a book for for two minutes then i can watch netflix after that so i can give myself a permission to to do something that i enjoy uh, after doing something that i it's new for me and I'm creating it as a habit. So make sure that you immediately reward your, for, for any action or any new habit that you create. And um, the, 
the other method that James Clear uh, mentions for making any habit satisfactory is um, is to never ever miss twice. I know it's difficult for us to, to stay with a habit every day or to, to perform a habit every day. It gets boring, but th that's the point. That is that is the point where where many people give up. That's the that's the time that many people think that it's getting boring. If they don't want to perform it, and um, James Clear emphasizes on that on this point that never ever miss a habit twice. Even if you miss something, make sure that you immediately get back to that because the longer it gets to perform, the next the next. Uh, the next cycle or the next frequency of, of your habit, the, the, uh, the more difficult it gets to, to keep it consistent for over the period of time. Now thank you so much for staying until the end. As, you, as, I, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to share with you two very important elements that can help you to get or to create any new good habits easily and to keep it forever for the rest of your life. Now do, those two elements are... Um, uh, I found it really, really important for me throughout the book. One is identity. James Clear says that for any career, for any new habit that you that you create, it is important for you to create the identity within yourself. For example, if I'm if I want to create a reading as a habit, as a new habit, then I, what I what I what I can do is I would try to adopt the values of 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 a person who reads frequently, who reads more. And once I create the identity of a reader in my in, in my body, I, I automatically generate the, the motivation to 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 read or to perform that habit more often. And the second thing that uh, that is really important is consistency. Consistency is the is the is the is the main reason to master any new habit. I'm going to make another video specifically on this how to how to uh, how to use consistency to master any any habit or anything or any skill so uh, make sure that you you choose a habit that's simple and uh, that that's that's easier to keep it consistent and if you keep it consistent the habit is going to stay with you for the rest of your life so that's it thank you so much again for staying until the end of the video and uh, with that said, um, thank, uh, goodbye and take care. Stay, stay safe and stay, stay healthy. Bye-bye.